Hi and hello everyone. Let us start the fantastic 5 MCQ discussion. Let us start with the first MCQ. Drug used for diagnosis of myasthenic rickets. Option A, neostigmine. Option B, adrophonium. Option C, tacrine. D, galantamine. Please try to answer this. Yes, if you are telling adrophonium, then you are right. So the test is also called as tensilon test. So the commonly used drug for myasthenic gravis diagnosis is hydrophonium. Hydrophonium is also used to differentiate cholinergic crisis versus myasthenic crisis versus myasthenic crisis. Now what about tacrine? galantamine tacrine and galantamine these are the drugs which are used to manage alzheimer's disease they are used to manage alzheimer's disease tacrine is discontinued now because of hepatotoxicity apart from that what are the other drugs for alzheimer disease remember the mnemonic guard the memory guard the memory so G for galantamine we have discussed, R for rivastigmin and D for donepezil which is considered drug of choice for Alzheimer's disease and M for mementine. mementine. So in that rivastigmin is available as patch formulation for Alzheimer's disease. So in this MCQ, we also learned drugs for Alzheimer's disease. Now coming to neostigmine. So we have two drugs, neostigmine and one more drug by the name pyridostigmine. These two drugs doesn't cross blood brain barrier and they are mainly used to manage muscle problems. Number one, they are used to treat myasthenic gravis. Second, they are used to manage cobra bite. So along with anti-snake venom, we give them to improve the muscle weakness. Third, to reverse non-depolarizing skeletal muscle relaxant. For example, to re reverse curium, curonium muscle relaxants. That is neostigmine, pedostigmine. Now whenever you are using neostigmine, pedostigmine, we use atropine with that. Why do you give atropine? Atropine blocks the muscarinic receptor and decreases the muscarinic adverse effects. To decrease the muscarinic adverse effect, we add atropine with neostigmine or pedostigmine. So in one MCQ, we have covered plenty of points in this. Okay, so the answer for this question is B, adrophonium. Suppose in the option, drug used for myasthenic gravis, adrophonium is not there. Then what is the alternative drug to diagnose myasthenic gravis? It is neostigmine. We can also use neostigmine to diagnose myasthenic gravis, but in the exam you have to choose the better option. Let us move on to the next MCQ. Beta blocker is contraindicated in. Contraindicated means where we should not give. Option A, stable angina. Option B, acute CHF, anxiety, migraine. Please understand beta blockers are not given in acute CHF. So acute CHF, the heart is not able to pump. So beta 1 is not working, heart is not able to pump. And if in that time you have to give beta 1 agonist to increase the force of contraction in acute CHF. So if I give beta blockers, it will worsen the acute CHF condition. So that's why in acute CHF we don't give beta blockers. But can we give beta blockers in chronic CHF? Yes. But what we do here is in chronic CHF we start beta blockers with very low dose and gradually increase the dose. That is very very important. Now do we use beta blocker in stable angina? Yes. But beta blockers are contraindicated in Prince metal angina also called as variant angina because the problem here is in Prince metal angina there is coronary vasospasm you know 
alpha 1 causes vasoconstriction and beta 2 causes vasodilation so if I use a beta blocker it will block this beta 2 action and the vasoconstriction predominate and it will worsen the prince metal angina so beta blockers are not given in prince metal or variant angina but you can give it in stable angina you know we can use propranolol in performance anxiety we can use propranolol in migraine prophylaxis so the answer will be acute CHF but we will also discuss what are the contraindications of non-selective beta blockers we don't give it in prince metal angina I told you we don't give it in peripheral vascular disease because they can cause vasoconstriction we don't give it in diabetes because they can cause hypoglycemic unawareness patient will not know the hypoglycemic symptoms we don't give them in heart block asthma and COPD this is being tested plenty of times because beta blockers block beta 2 and they can cause bronchoconstriction and worsen asthma and COPD they are not given in bradycardia and they are not given in acute CHF so the mnemonic is please don't allow beta blockers for acute CHF I don't think you should remember the mnemonic you should know the logic you should know the concept here so coming back the answer for this is acute CHF I hope you understood the answer for this <laughs> moving on to the third MCQ which of the following is not a peripherally acting skeletal muscle relaxant so a bit confusing but try to guess the answer so the answer is D tizanidine so tizanidine is a alpha 2 agonist which is a central skeletal muscle relaxant SKMR all others are peripherally acting skeletal muscle relaxant what do you mean by central and peripheral let us discuss skeletal muscle relaxant can be two types central and peripheral central the main action is on the brain now here central skeletal muscle relaxant the voluntary power is present the tone is present but in peripheral acting the voluntary power is absent tone is also reduced so that's why this peripheral acting skeletal muscle relaxant we use it in anesthesia practice central acting we give it in muscle spasm we can give it to the patient and patient can take it at home also examples are just now I told you alpha tokenist tizanidin GABA drugs like benzodiazepine and thiocolchicoside then we have GABA B agonist GABA B this is GABA A GABA B is baclofen these are all centrally acting skeletal muscle relaxant peripherally we have two types direct which acts directly on the muscle the name is called dantrolene sodium so in the comment section you should tell me where dantrolene is the drug of choice and one more drug is quinine coming to neuromuscular junction neuromuscular junction the drug can act on NM and stimulate or it can act on NM and block so these are called depolarizing and these are called non depolarizing skeletal muscle relaxant depolarizing we have succinylcholine and a drug called decamethonium decamethonium and a non depolarizing or competitive blocker we have D-tuberculin or any drug ending with curium or anything ending with curonium comes under this so I hope you got the answer for your question how the skeletal muscle relaxants are classified central and peripheral peripheral are the one which we use in anesthesia practice central are the one which we can give it in OPD basis right coming back d tuberculin is a peripheral acting skeletal muscle relaxant quinine is a directly acting peripheral skeletal muscle relaxant decamethonium it is a depolarizing skeletal muscle relaxant similar to similar to succinylcholine i hope you got the answer for this okay coming to the last question zolendronate taken upright position to avoid the risk of now anything any with dronate is a bisphosphonate now the complication of bisphosphonate is 
esophagitis or gastritis so when you take bisphosphonate orally we have two complications we have two complications esophagitis and gastritis so what is the advice to avoid this what advice we should tell the patient we should tell the patient to take the tablet in empty stomach and it should be taken with full glass of water and then after that they should not lie down not lie down they should stay in upright position up to 30 minutes and no beverages tea coffee up to 30 minutes so this instruction if we give we can avoid the complication of esophagitis or gastritis so the answer is a what are the other adverse effect of bisphosphonate the other adverse effect are they can increase the risk of fractures and fracture is endotrochanteric fracture fracture increased that is increased if you are using it for more than 5 years more than 5 years usage of bisphosphonate can increase one more adverse effect of bisphosphonate is they can cause osteonecrosis of jawbone so I told you three adverse effect of this drug number one gastritis or esophagitis fractures if you are using it for more than five years and osteonecrosis of jaw bone these are the problems these drugs can cause also cause hypocalcemia because they inhibit the osteoclast activation so coming on to the drug of choice bisphosphonates where are their drug of choice they are the drug of choice for osteoporosis any osteoporosis whether it is senile steroid induced or postmenopausal it's the drug of choice bisphosphonates are also used in Paget's disease of the bone hypercalcemia of malignancy and osteolytic bone metastasis so they end with dronate so here the answer is esophagitis or gastritis to prevent that we have to take the drug in upright position don't lie down up to 30 minutes take it with full glass of water empty stomach no beverages or food up to 30 minutes after taking the tablet now tell me a drug used in osteoporosis a drug used in osteoporosis if you use it for more than two years it can increase the risk of osteosarcoma so you have to comment a drug used in osteoporosis if you use it for more than two years patient may develop osteosarcoma what is it coming to the last question mental retardation small head microcephaly and underdevelopment of mid face region in an infant is associated with chronic maternal news of so tricky question i hope you'll understand this and answer it carbimazole is an anti drug which is known to produce qt's aplasia it is scalp defect nothing that the patient the baby may have hypothyroid features that is due to that is due to carbimazole phenytoin will cause fetal hydrogen syndrome mainly there will be cardiac defects there will be cleft lip and palate and small fingers microphalanges or small fingers these are typical of phenytoin ethanol how do we come to ethanol patient will have mental retardation as well as growth retardation and facial abnormality particularly mid facial abnormalities warfarin can cause warfarin also can cause teratogenicity but warfarin will have skeletal abnormality and also there will be nasal bone hyperplasia so nasal bone and skeletal abnormality like stippled epiphysis you go with warfarin so if you see this options what is your answer the option if you see the answer will be ethanol ethanol is the one which can cause mental retardation and growth retardation and small face and mid face abnormality so the answer will be C ethanol so you have to answer me this is the fetal alcohol syndrome you can see from the image 
so you have to answer me which drug can cause neural tube defect which drug can cause Epstein's anomaly so you have two things to be answered tell me a drug anti-epileptic causing neural tube defect tell me an anti-psychiatric drug causing Epstein's anomaly with that we'll wind up the fantastic five mcqs hope you enjoyed the session hope you understood so many points from this any doubt you can ask me in the group so if you uh, find this content useful press the like button subscribe to the channel and share it to your friends thank you all